Good afternoon, good afternoon. It is Friday, May 22nd, 2020, and welcome to the UR College Bound Show. Here we are, another episode. If you're watching, of course, that probably means that you are college bound, especially for all of our upward bound and talent search students watching, and probably for any other students watching too. My name is Brady Ferguson, and I'm Senior Academic Advisor with our pre-college programs of the David T. Kern Center at the University of Rochester, and that includes Upward Bound and Talent Search. And I'm glad to be here. Glad that you all are all here as well. Let's see who's in the building. Mr. Steal Your College Bound Points is here, aka Jaquan. Glad you made it, Jaquan. Appreciate seeing you, of course. The Mac has returned. Mel is here. Good to see you, Armel. Who else is here? Jordan is here, or some type of sheep or something? What is that? Oh, the goat. Is that what that is? I think that's meant to say the goat is here. Jordan is here. Glad you made it, Jordan. Make sure you stay tuned in, because I got a little picture to share with you very shortly. Of course, our... Fearless Leader is also present here each and every Friday. She was trying to be the first, but she was not. That was Jaquan. Although whether you were first, second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever it was, you still get 15 college-bound points for attending. So Jaquan, Armel, Jordan, boom, 15 college-bound points. You already got them. For anyone else, make sure to drop your name in the chat. Full name, please, so we know it's you and don't have to figure out some weird YouTube handle you made for yourself. Just drop your name in the chat. Or if you don't want us to know your name and connect it with your strange YouTube handle, you can send a text message to 585-301-4488. Or you can email upwardbound at ur.rochester.edu. So three simple ways to get yourself 15 college-bound points for today. And then you can get another 10 by completing a very simple assignment that we will tell you about later in the show. So up to 25 college-bound college bound points this afternoon, and you'll be well on your way to earning incentives. So once again, chat your name, text it, or you can email it as well. Also, we do encourage participation on social media. So there's the hashtag, UrTrioWorks. Feel free to post about the show on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever you use. And if there are any exceptionally good posts, I will share them later in the show. So feel free to post about the show, but put that hashtag on it so I can find your post and make it interesting and clever. I appreciate that too. Now I mentioned a few ways to earn college bound points. There's my name again, for those that missed it, Brady Ferguson. But I also want to mention some more ways to earn college-bound points. You should know these by now, but we may have some new viewers today because we just did our upward-bound orientations earlier this week for new students and last week, last Saturday. So we might have some new students tuning in today, and I want to make sure that they also know the different services they can take advantage of and they can earn college-bound points for their participation. Of course, we have our show every Friday. You can get up to 25 college bound points for participating in the UR College Bound Show. For doing a weekly advising meeting with your Upward Bound Academic Advisor, you get 10 points for that. And that, that's pretty simple, whether it's by text message, phone call, email. All you got to do is respond to us, so please don't leave us on red. The UR Success Academy has been going this week, and it will continue through next week. But next week is the final week. So if you need any help with any of your classwork, any of your final projects for your classes at school, make sure to come by next Tuesday or Thursday. That's on Zoom. We have plenty of tutors, any subject. And for tutoring, get five points per hour for doing the tutoring. So make sure to check that out because next week is the last week. Then you'll see we also have our clubs. And these are more for fun, but you can get college-bound points for participating as well. Art Club is on Monday nights although we are taking next Monday off for Memorial Day. We have the book club on Wednesdays, and we're starting our new book, Stamps, next week. 
And Coding Club is a couple Saturdays a month, usually the second and fourth Saturday of the month. So that means we have it tomorrow, 2 to 3 p.m. on Zoom. And then in between those two twice a month Saturday sessions, we have projects that you can work on on your own. And we do one new module each week. And our Coding Club, Club students are working on building their own video game. So check that out. It's not too late to get in on the action there. For any new students here, or if you watch the recording later, Kivon says, welcome to the family. Yay! To, uh, to the new members of our Upward Bound and Kern Center pre-college family, welcome. One additional way you can earn points that I did not mention is through our Level Up programming on Instagram. Usually we do some type of little post each day or story or something like that. But all you got to do is respond to it or participate in the challenge and you get college bound points there too. So for those of you on the Instagram, that's another good way you can earn points. I want to take one minute now to recognize our college bound points leaders from last month, from April. And you can take a look here. I'll hide out behind the, the standings here, but see where you fell. We broke it down by grade level. And for the highest earner in each grade level, we did provide a little incentive, a little reward. So I'll show you what they got. Sharon Matthews got this nice Finders Seekers STEM kit in the mail. As you can probably see, it has some different information related to Hawaii, and there's a little game you can play. And each month there's a different location. So that's the Finders Seekers kit. General Lindsay was our 10th grade high points earner, highest points earner, and he got this game console that he can now program with a video game that he's designing. That's pretty cool, right? So that's what General got, highest points earner for 10th graders. For 12th graders, we had Kaisha Taylor, and she just wanted to go with the Grubhub. So got some Dogtown there, that nice Dogtown plate. Some people would claim it's the best in Rochester, although I... I'm still a fan of the original from Tahoe's, but Dogtown's pretty tasty as well. So that's what Kaisha got. And then we had, for 11th grade, Jordan Lindo. Now, he went with the Grubhub, but from Pontillo's. Got some wings and, and some pizza from Pontillo's. But as you can see from this picture, he probably should have ordered the mild sauce on the wings. So next time, Jordan, please remember that. If you can't handle the heat, just go with the mild sauce on the wings. Now, Sharon, if you saw, she has already passed that 100-point threshold. So she has already earned herself the newest edition of the Upward Bound T-shirt. I cannot reveal just yet what that will look like. But any student in our Upward Bound program can earn that T-shirt. You just have to hit the 100-point threshold. So hopefully we'll have some more 100-point earners by the end of this month. And we will have some more incentives to give out at the end of this month for the top points earner in each grade. Jordan's still crying from those wings. Maybe I have to send you a milkshake or a popsicle or something, or something for next month if you're the high point center again, the highest point center for 11th graders again, Jordan. We'll see. Next up on the show, we have our alumni interview or our alum interview. This week, we're excited to have our first interviewee who is an alum of Vanguard Collegiate High School, and I'm going to bring her on now. Hello. Okay. Hello. She is Hello. she is here. We're just waiting oh, for her video on. to show up. There she is. It's Erica is Fernandez, that? Vanguard, class of twenty eighteen and currently a student at RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology, and will be class of twenty two there. So our live studio audience is gonna give her a big round of applause. And welcome to the show, Erica. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty decent. It's pretty nice. <laughs> Thank you. Hope, are you good? Thank you. I'm <laughs> doing pretty well. Thank you. Okay. Now, let me ask, how have things been going for you lately with the end of the semester and 
considering all that's going on in the world now? How have things been going for you lately? Well, online classes were, it was like, it was difficult for me to get acclimated to the situation. So it wasn't for me personally. I think if it continued with online classes, I might have like no choice but to take a break for next fall because I don't think it's for me. <laughs> Like, until classes, it becomes huh? physical. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, I know you're not the only college student. We've also had a lot of high school students who found it difficult, harder than learning in person, but I'm glad you stuck with it and you made it through the end of the semester, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, I, did, I, I didn't match my expectations, sadly, but can't really do much about it now, so you live and you learn. Right, I think one of those situations where not too much in our control, so we just have to do the best with the time that's given us. Let me mm-hmm. show you this. Looks like Brianna Perez is watching, and she said, "Represent Erica, another Vanguard alum, watching the My show. Glad girl. you're checking it out, Brianna." <laughs> Let me ask this: Can you tell us, Erica, what's a typical day like as a college student? And you could talk about before the. I'm guessing it it was more typical before the pandemic hit, but if you want to talk about what it's been like since then, you can share that as well. So it's up to you. I'm just going to, you know, talk about it like during normal conditions because I'm just going to hope it's not like that anymore. But I would say your day depends on like how many credits you're planning on taking. When you first come into college for RIT, you don't really have control of your schedule. You just kind of do like like take the classes that take the classes that your advisor recommends you take for it but if if you have like an ADM that day it's rough <laughs> it's just like low motivation but or if you are a science major like me and environmental science and you have three hour labs that day is just going to be exhausting you're gonna have very <laughs> it's gonna feel like it's dragging on so but if you are having many lectures it they it's it's like a b c days like depending on your schedule but you can i try to fit in like lunch or exercise between lectures and classes so i at least feel (laughs) well-rounded as a person and if you're living on campus or you're commuting, that's also a completely different story <laughs> as well. And after classes, get as much studying as you want with a buddy <laughs> or go to the library because life's hard <laughs> and you need a buddy to help persevere with you. And if I, because I live in the apartment, I, have to, I cook dinner with my roommates. So it's really nice. <laughs> it makes me happy. And then if I'm not stressed out and I didn't procrastinate, I'll, um, I'll, it's either an all-nighter day, I mean all-nighter type of day, or you hang out with friends all night and makes you like, <sighs> makes you feel like you succeeded, where you're able to take this break. <laughs> Erica, how easy was it for you to make friends while in college? So, uh, it was pretty n- nice. I it, was, it wasn't too difficult. I had the help of, like, the transition of a summer program into RIT, so I already had friends, like, coming in. But it was pretty easy making friends in my major. I would definitely recommend making friends with people that are in the same major because they will carry you (laughs) throughout and just like try to support you whenever you have any rough assignments and exam like just little study buddies and going to clubs really also helped um cement those friendships okay now you mentioned you're an environmental science major can you tell us why you chose that major and also why you chose rit i chose environmental science because i i I don't know i want to make a difference to the planet I really love animals, and I was considering being a vet, but I'm just like, no, never. 
So I would like to rather work with wildlife animals because it's more research-based and there's so many opportunities for study abroad, especially at RIT, just great advisors and support system over there. I was almost, I almost went to Dubai for spring break for research. It was really nice. Then Corona hit and then that got thrown out the window. But <laughs> it, it's really nice. I don't, I, I, I can't explain how much I love RIT. But I chose, I also chose it, the, the school because really great financial options. When choosing a school, uh, I didn't really, I, I feel like the prior, like the ranking got set up after I got accepted rather than before, like preference wise, because financial aid is a huge factor in everything. And out of state schools just did not provide the same support as like local Rochester schools did. Like it was just warmed my heart. If you're a student, join, apply to RIT, get the Rochester City Scholars program going on, free tuition. You'll just get loved all around. Great support system. It's great. <laughs> sure. Glad to hear that. Now, glad to hear that you found the college is a good fit for you and it sounds like it's worked out well so far. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as that support system, I'd like to ask who is your advisor at RIT and how often do you talk to them and how satisfied are you with the advising that they're giving to you? So, uh, for when you go to college, you have an, an advisor that's for your major. So, they're assigned for it and you are only really required to talk to them at least like once a semester before you choose your classes to make sure you're on track and everything. But if you ever have any issues, just like talk to them. They'll like recommend you so many resources that like you get nervous talking to them, but they've dealt with similar situations so many times. So it's always good to reach out to them as well as I have another advisor towards with the Rochester City Scholars Program that helps with emo emotional advice and all of that, and that helps with Rochester City Schools district kids with a similar background as me. Mm -hmm. Got it. Now, for those, anyone watching, students or anyone else watching, feel free to drop any questions in the chat that you have for Erica, and I'm sure she'll be happy to answer them. But while you're thinking of questions, I got a few more of my own. You did mention clubs earlier as well as being a good way to meet new people and make friends. Are there any clubs that you've been involved in there? Oh, I love the Latin American Student Association. They're so great, so kind. Um, it's, for me, I value culture a lot. So they talk about, back, like, like a lot of students from similar backgrounds attend this like club. So I just felt like it was really easy to connect to people through that. There's a lot of, like, it's, I don't know, through the Division of Diversity and Inclusion, they have the, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's a, like a Lana support system. It feels like, it's like a little bit of a club. They do a lot of events on campus, so it's, you just attend those events and support the organization. Alana stands for African, Latin, Asian, and Native American students. So they really help push support for bringing out the represent, bring out representation on campus. Got it. Sounds good. Now we have a question from a student, Erica, and it's from Jameer Warfield. And Jameer, before I pose this to Erica, I just want to let you know that we will have some more advice on this very topic coming up after we're done with the interview with Erica. But I'll ask Erica first, what stands out in a resume? Or I'm going to rephrase it for you, Erica. What did you do as a high school student to make your resume stand out when applying to college? So I, I up around kind of like made me like aware of it, but like, I don't know. I tried to like really hyper focus on unique op like unique research opportunities that I got so with upper bound I was able to research at U of R so at the bot in the bio labs so I just kind of want to emphasize I already had research experience and that 
like, I don't know. I wanted to just make sure that some, I, like, point out the experiences that I had were that are unique to me. And it's, I don't know, I feel like it's, you just have to put yourself out there and keep applying to things. Like, Roch, like Rochester City Scholarships, there's a Rochester City Foundation that provides so many scholarships if you apply to them. And they're just like, wow, you got that? Great. Because not many people go for it, I think. Like, people don't think too much about local scholarships as well. Great. Good advice, especially about highlighting the unique experiences on the resume. So keep that in mind for all our high school students watching. Now, related to that experience, Erica, doing that research experience as a high school student, did that make you feel like you were well prepared for college or how prepared did you feel you were that first year of college? Um, I feel like I was prepared for lab work through the experience. I don't know. It depends on if you're trying to be like a science major, going towards science majors, but towards getting the lab research experience, like the, getting lab experience is very important because it just makes you feel more comfortable doing what you do. It, like intro to bio, a lot of students do that. So even if you're not interested in science, like some people are going into the tech field of computer science and RIT just kind of makes them take a science classes to make them a little well-rounded. But I feel like no matter what I did, I wouldn't have been prepared for what college really was because high school is so different than the actual college thing. Because no matter how many times people told me, college is difficult, I'm just like, I got it. I'm a good kid in high school. I'm up there. But I wasn't really pushed. So I didn't really do, I didn't really need to do homework to succeed. But I would describe the college experience as doing SAT prep but for every class and stressing out about it. It's like, I did a lot of work for that. So I was just like, oh, this is, this is it. <laughs> this is so hard. I mean, you just, you just have to know that when you go into college, you have to push yourself and utilize resources like tutoring and like ask people for help, no matter how Pride, like let go of your pride that you had because I know it's really difficult to do. Great. That's more great advice, students. Let go of mm -hmm. your pride. Utilize the resources and the help that is there for you. Uh, very important to being successful in college. Now, we have time for maybe one or two more questions. So, students, this is your last chance. If you have a question about RIT, about the transition from Vanguard to RIT, or any other questions for Erica, drop them in the chat now because we still have her for maybe one or two more questions. Now, another student did drop something in the chat, and this is Brianna Perez, another Vanguard alum, but she said, has another good piece of advice here. She said, being a part of clubs, exclamation point, Erica and I were the frontiers of basically a diversity club in high school and volunteer work as well. Show sure you're a part of the community. So I think this is more advice for the resume. If you, can, if you do start a club or are involved with a unique club, make sure to put that on the resume and any type of volunteer work, leadership positions that you had in the club or volunteer work that you did, that's also good on the resume. So I don't see any more questions in the chat. We'll see if any come up. But I have one more myself, Erica. I just, I'm just i wondering about the food at RIT because you mentioned cooking with your roommates. But I'm curious, do you cook all your own food? Do you ever eat in the dining hall or go to any other places to eat on campus? What's the food been like at RIT? Okay. So first year, you're kind of forced to eat the food at RIT, and you kind of want to cry because it's garbage, but you just kind of, like, they have an all-you-can-eat dining hall, but it's not that good, in my opinion. <laughs> it's, but there's, you just have to kind of find what you, like, the little things that you like. It's really easy to get fat in college. It's so easy. You just eat when you're bored and it's like, oh, I have so much dining dollars. I don't really know. I need to spend them all. So, you know, <laughs> you just like, there's so many unhealthy options. You just kind of have to try your best. I mean, 
I would recommend before when you enter before you when you like get into college you ask people online about what dining plan to get because colleges try to scam you into buying like the most expensive ones for no reason when you don't need it <laughs> like they just some people bought the most expensive plan and you're not going to go to an all you can eat buffet like six like eight 20 times in a week like it's not you don't need it <laughs> but you know just try your like just try to limit your intake <laughs> all right well, thank you so that's some more good advice high school students i hope you're i hope you will keep erica's advice in mind and erica thank you for coming on the show today before we go mm-hmm. Can you just tilt that screen down a little bit so everyone can see your Upward Bound shirt? I don't think they saw that yet. Yeah! There we go. And a big round of applause to my live studio audience. Thank you, Erica, and good luck with everything over the summer, and let's stay in touch. Thank you, you too. So that's Erica Fernandez, Vanguard alum and current RIT student. Kevon did drop a message in the chat here that I want to share before we move on. And she said, so UB, Upward Bound can actually prepare students. We urge y'all to take advantage of your resources like tutoring and strongly encourage SAT prep. Minimally, minimally, it will prepare you for the stress in college. That's right. Of course, Kevon is always right. Next up, we have another Vanguard alum, and she is now a staff member working with our Upward Bound program. She is also an alumni ambassador, and I'm going to bring her on, and she has some more important advice and information to share with you all today, and that is Shaquita Williams. So a big round of applause from our live studio audience. Shaquita, how are you doing this afternoon? Wait, I couldn't hear you. Can you say it again? How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I was muted. I'm good. I had trouble hearing you before, but I hear you loud and clear now. So I'll let you take it away with the information you want to, to share. Okay, so today we'll be talking about effective resume writing, not just writing a resume, but writing a good resume that makes you stand out. So, These are all the parts that you will need to create a resume for college. Colleges want to look and see that you're a a well-rounded student. They want to know that you're able to balance your schoolwork with clubs and you still make time to volunteer and work if you want to. So parts of the resume include heading, academic profile, co-curricular activities, which are school affiliated activities, extracurricular activities, which are activities that you do outside of school, any employment history that you have, skills, volunteer service, and recognition. So your heading should include your name, address, and your contact information. This information should stand out from the rest of your resume. It's usually centered at the top of your resume um, and the, the resume should follow. There are, many, there are many templates that you can use and they're easy to find. So your academic profile lists the dates that that you've been in high school. So it should be four years from like 2016 to 2020. If you graduate this year, this is the place where you list all of your academic achievements and highlight any advanced coursework that you may have completed. So any AP classes or IB classes, or if you're ranking the top five in your class, you might want to put that there or list your SAT scores if you think that it'll strengthen your resume. Co-curricular activities are, again, any activities that you um, do that are affiliated with school. So any clubs, musical groups, sports. This is where you showcase how active you are outside of the classroom. Uh, I know I went to city schools and I know that many of you guys are in the Hillside with Scholarship Program or Upper Bound. Here's where you put all of um, the outside of class activities that you have participated in. Extracurricular activities are activities that you do outside of school. This includes uh, if you do babysitting, if you do sports that are not affiliated with your school. Upward Bound Book and Art Club would also be listed here. 
So anything that you participate in outside of school. So your employment history, you want to list any relevant jobs or internships or any summer programs or summer research that you um, have participated in throughout high school. So for all four years, like if you did something in 10th grade, but it's your senior year, you still want to list that research that you did in Upward Bound Summer in 10th grade and include all dates that you were involved. This, your skills section of your resume is where you list anything that is about you that is like outstanding. Like if you speak four languages, you, that is a skill and people look for that. It makes you stand out from other people like me who only speak one language. And um, if, or if you can type really fast, that's also a skill. Um, a lot of colleges and jobs look for that in people. If you can create really fancy graphs and charts in like Microsoft Word or Excel, this is a good place to put all of your skills. If it's like software skills or just basic computer skills, you still want to list them. So volunteer experience. Uh, you should have a lot of volunteer experience when you're in high school because you have a lot of time on your hands and colleges like to see that you are well-rounded. So not only that you can get good grades in school and like be good on a sports team, but how are you interacting with your community? Um, all schools, all city schools in Rochester have a community service requirement. So you will have some um, volunteer experience to put on this. Also, if you are in Upward Bound, we do um, volunteering over the summers. So you will also list that here. And last part of the resume is recognition. So if this is uh, your space to shine, stand out, brag a little bit, this is um, this serves as a strong finish to your resume. So you want to list any awards that you have um, received, whether it's like sports awards, academic awards, uh, even upper bound awards, they would all go here. Great, thank you Shaquita for sharing those tips on, on writing a good resume. And did you also want to mention the assignment for the students this week? Yes, so this PowerPoint, um, the whole PowerPoint will be available if you want to reach out to your advisor to get a copy of it. Uh, your assignment for this week is to write a resume draft. Even if it's not perfect, just list everything down, go through the PowerPoint, uh, put things in order, and then send it to your advisor for College Bound Points. Great. Thank you, Shaquita. And another big round of applause from our studio audience. Shaquita joining us for some helpful tips today. Thank you, Shaquita. So those are your tips on building a strong resume. Next up, we have some tips from Gina on getting solid letters of recommendation, which are another important part of your college applications along with your resume and the other components of your application. So I'm going to show that next, after which we will have the In Other News segment of our show featuring both Gina and Shaquita. So I hope you enjoy and learn some useful information. Obtaining letters of recommendation is one component of the college application. What is letter recommendation? It's an endorsement of a college applicant that is written to bolster chances for admission. Recommendation letters are brief, formal statements that should highlight positive qualities and explain why the candidate will be successful in college studies. Why are letters of recommendation important? Colleges value recommendations because they reveal things about you that grades and test scores can't, provide personal opinions of your character, show who is willing to speak on your behalf, Letters of recommendations work for you when they present you in the best possible light, showcasing your skills and ability. Who should you ask to write your letter of recommendation? The best letters are usually written by teachers, school counselors, program advisors, employers, and someone who can describe your skills, accomplishments, and personality. Choose one of your teachers from junior year or a current teacher who has known you for a while. Colleges want a current perspective on you, so a teacher from several years ago isn't the best choice. 
Consider asking a teacher who also knows you outside of the classroom. For example, a teacher who directed you in a play or advised your debate club can make a great reference. Consider other adults, such as an employer, a coach, or an advisor from an activity outside of school, who have a, who have a good understanding of you and your strengths. Perhaps most important, pick someone who will be enthusiastic about willing to write you, about writing you a letter. A quick tip is re read each of your college applications carefully. Schools often will ask for letters of recommendation from academic teacher, a, your school counselor, and sometimes in a specific subject or a school counselor or a school counselor or both. Um, you also want to make sure you're checking because many schools will vary on how many teacher recommendations they need or if they need a community person as well as a teacher and counselor. Um, but for the most part, schools will um, always require your counselor and at least one teacher. It is also good to get recommendations from individuals that can speak on your ability in a particular subject area that you may be pursuing. If you're working, looking to go into nursing school, for instance, it may be a good idea to have your biology teacher write you a letter of recommendation if you feel they can speak highly of your capabilities in that subject. When should you ask for letters of recommendation? Some are going into your senior year. Make sure to give your reference at least one month before your earliest deadline to complete and send your letters. The earlier you ask, the better. Many teachers like to write recommendations during the summer. If you apply under early decision or early action plans, you'll definitely need to ask for recommendations by the start of your senior year or before. Remember that some teachers will be writing whole stacks of letters, which takes time. Your teachers will do a better job and write you a better letter if they don't have to rush. How to ask for letters of recommendation? Well, ask them, ask, them, ask them if they are comfortable for writing you a letter of recommendation. If you are unsure about someone in particular, politely ask if he or she feels comfortable recommending you. That's a good way to avoid weak letters. You don't want someone writing you a letter that doesn't want to write you a letter. Make it easy for them. Some teachers write many recommendation letters each year. Even if they know you well, it's a good idea to take some time to speak with them. Make it easy for them to give positive detailed information about your achievements and your potential by refreshing their memory. Here's how. Maybe make an appointment for a phone call or sit down and talk. I mean, in these times, it's probably going to be a phone call. And talk to them about your class participation. Remind them of specific work projects you're proud of. Tell them what you learned in class. Mention any challenges you overcame and give them information they need to provide specific examples of your work. Talk about your accomplishments, hobbies, and plans for going to college and the future. If you need to discuss part of your transcript, such as like low grades during your sophomore year, for example, do so, explain why you had difficulty and discuss how you changed and improved since then. Whether approaching teachers, a counselor, or another reference, you may want to provide them with a resume that briefly outlines your activities, both in and outside of the classroom, along with your goals. Be appreciative and thankful. Writing letters or recommendations are time-consuming. Please be appreciative and thankful of the time and effort they're going to be putting into this. And now for in other news. Lockdowns due to coronavirus outbreak may be benefiting our planet. The lockdowns have triggered a dramatic decrease in global CO2 emissions by 17%. Southern California has experienced improved air quality. This unprecedented fall may only be temporary as countries get back to their normal level of activity. A man named Terrence Lester, who had been homeless himself as a teenager, 
stated that he founded his campaign with the hopes of supporting neglected people living in poverty during the pandemic. He has also teamed up with other homeless charities to install sinks in cities like Austin, Columbus, New Orleans, Baltimore, and New York City. Since the Kansas City Zoo in Missouri has been closed to visitors amidst the novel coronavirus outbreaks, the resident penguins have been eagerly awaiting the return of the beloved human admirers. As a means of keeping the penguins entertained during the facility's closure, however, their caretakers decided to stimulate their cultural senses by taking them on a field trip to the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. Here's more. We are so happy to today welcome our colleagues from the zoo and they brought special friends and actually we're seeing how they're reacting to art. Take care of wild animals at the Kansas City Zoo. We're always looking for ways to enrich their lives and stimulate their days. And during this shutdown period, our animals really miss having visitors come out and see them. They seem definitely to react much better to Caravaggio than to Monet. And uh, these are Peruvian penguins, so we were speaking a bit in Spanish and they really appreciated our history. We were happy to visit and the penguins absolutely loved it. These 12 sunny photos were voted best in the world for depicting the essence of spring. Enjoy. And that's all for In Other News. Thank you. There we go. Nice to see some good news for once in a while, huh? We had pictures, penguins, clean air. What, what gets any better than that? So thank you, Gina. Thank you, Shaquita for sharing that with us today. So we're coming down the home stretch here, but to wrap things up, let me give a little reminder in case we have anyone new who wasn't here at the start of the show, make sure to put your name in the chat or send a text to 585-301-4488 or send an email to upwardbound at ur.rochester.edu with your full name first and last so that we can give you credit for attending today and so that you can get those 15 college bound points. We don't want you to miss out on those points. Earlier, I did show our college bound points winners, champions, MVPs for April, but we also had some from March. Let me show them to you also because I did not show them earlier. Look at them. We had Jason, Cody, Aroma, as well as Idalis. Those are our top points earners in March, actually from the beginning of the school year through March. 
Those were our points earners with their Grubhub reward they got. And Upward Bound Man got in on the action as well. But the question now is who will be those top points earners in the month of it? Uh, in the month of May, and we still have about a week and a half to determine that. So keep working on getting those points up. Okay, if students, if you have any questions about the show today or any final comments, drop those in the chat now so we can see them before the end of the episode. I'll give you a reminder about your assignment, which is a way to an easy way to get 10 additional college-bound points. I would suggest doing it right now, getting out of the way, get those 10 points heading into the long holiday weekend. Chiquita mentioned it earlier, and I'll say it again. Here's all you have to do. Send an, an email with your resume to an advisor, the Upward Bound Academic Advisor you usually work with, or any of us. You can send it to me, Gina, Kevon, whoever you want to send it to is fine. Just make sure to send it. Your resume along with the names of two teachers and one other person that you are going to ask to write you a letter of recommendation for college. You don't have to ask them just yet, although you can if you want to, but we want you to think about who those people are that will be able to write you a strong letter of recommendation. So just send us the names in the email that you attach your resume to so that we can see how it looks and give you some tips on how you can make it even better. So that's your assignment. Ten college bound points. I would suggest doing it as soon as the show ends, get it done out of the way with. Hopefully many of you already have a resume and maybe you just need to update it with some new activities you've done since you last updated it. So get that done because college applications are right around the corner for you juniors. Shaquille also mentioned that the slides that she and Gina used today are available to you. So the link to those slides is in the, in the description of this video. So take a look at the description. The link to the slides is there. A few other links are there, like to our social media accounts. And while you're at it, go ahead and give us a thumbs up if you found this video helpful. And feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. That way you won't miss out on future content that we share using this platform. A few more reminders. The recording to this video will stay on our YouTube channel. So if you didn't watch the whole thing or need to go back and catch something you didn't miss the first time, if you have friends who could benefit from watching it, please feel free to share it. The recording will be saved on our YouTube channel and it is public, so feel free to share. We do have Coding Club tomorrow, 2 to 3 p.m. We'll send out a remind message shortly after the show that has the link to the Zoom meeting for Coding Club. So Jameer, I know you've done it before, but New students are welcome to give it a try as well. Students are working on building their own or designing their own video game or their own arcade game, old school video game. So check it out 2 to 3 p.m. tomorrow. That's with Danielle Daniels, our director for diversity in STEM. On Monday, there will be no art club. That's just this coming Monday because of the Memorial Day holiday. But we'll pick that up the following week. And next week is the last week of our UR Success Academy. So Tuesday and Thursday next week, 3 to 5 p.m. on Zoom, your last chance to get some help from our tutors with any final projects or work for your class at school. So check that out next week, Tuesday and Thursday, because that is the final week of the UR Success Academy. As far as the UR College Bound Show, our next episode will be Friday, May 29th. That episode will be especially for ninth graders, but any students are welcome to attend or to check it out. The following week, we're in June. June 5th, we'll have our 10th grade episode, and then June 12th, our next 11th grade episode. So that's in three weeks from today. Make sure you're keeping in touch with your academic advisor. Please respond to our messages, our calls. We're just trying to check in with you and see what we can do to help you. And of course, make sure to read those remind messages because we send out some important information that way. That is going to bring us just about to the end, Shaquita wanted to say, you're welcome. Thank you again, Shaquita. We appreciated all the important information that you shared today. Gina, you as well. Erica Fernandez, of course, we appreciate any alum volunteering their time to come on the show and share, share some helpful information with our students. So thank you. We appreciate all of you. Before I go, I just want to say to all of the students who are celebrating the holy month of Ramadan right now, 
and who have Eid at the end of Ramadan coming up. Eid Mubarak. And to all of the students and families who will be celebrating Memorial Day on Monday, happy Memorial Day. Of course, it's a time when we remember and commemorate those who have given their lives in the service of our country. So we do want to remember them, but we hope that you enjoy Memorial Day and do so safely and responsibly. And hope to see you all on our next UR College Bound show next week. So have a good night and have a good weekend.